graphics i was playing about last night with uh, with the video editing software i decided we need something new for the new year so or the new season uh, so here we are it is the equivalent of a dog walk video uh, but it's not like a dog walk video because it's too warm to walk the dog um so i'm not going to take the dog out he's over there uh somewhere i hope you can see him i'm here with my feet in a paddling pool uh, just finished work, all very nice and good. But I wanted to put something out there. It's been a couple of days since I've written or filmed anything. Um, and I figured that there was a few little bits that I wanted to talk about and that you guys uh, might want to put some comments in the comment section on as well. So here I am, chilling out in my backyard. I've got a little list. I write all my notes, look on the back of a, an envelope, um, just to do a little video for you. Uh, and it will be probably about half an hour. Who knows? I'm quite chilled here, to be honest. This paddling pool is absolutely beautiful. I've been at work all day. Absolutely wonderful stuff. So, first of all, Hartley Pool on Saturday. Uh, now, on Saturday, I had the pleasure of uh, of the company of some some great Lincoln City fans um, here at the house. Uh, ben was here as well, um, which was uh, <laughs> which was nice. Um, and obviously, we were we were playing Hartley Pool at the time, so there was lots of chatter about that. The result really doesn't matter. In my opinion, um, one all means nothing. I mean, it was you know it was better than the result we got against them in the FA Cup, but it's by the by. I think that what was noticeable was that we kind of kicked up, kind of ramped up, didn't we? The the, the preparation. Some players got um, a little bit longer than than they have been doing. I think the uh, the choice of, of first team was quite interesting. Um, still, yeah, I still think that we're a little bit light in in certain areas. Sorry. Thunderflies. I think we're a little bit light in certain areas still, um, but it's not showing. We've got a squad that, if we were to kick off tomorrow, I think that we've got a squad that is capable of finishing above at least four teams in this division. Um, I do still think that there's there's one or two areas that we we need to work on, and I'm sure that the club are working really hard on that. It's nice to see Ben House amongst the goals. I understand the behind closed doors friendlies that we played while we were on our pre-season uh, trip. He scored in as well. Uh, against uh, was it an Israeli team in Hungary, something like that. Um, I think Ben, I, I like the look of Ben House. Um, he he kind of he, he played bit parts, didn't he, towards the end of that season? But then when he came in against Portsmouth, he obviously scored. Uh, I thought he had a really good game in whatever the home game was the week after that. I can't remember, it might have been Cheltenham. Um, and look, the thing is, the likes of Ben House and Charlie Kendall and and signings this summer like Jay Ben are, are, are what sort of players that we need to do well you know we need to sign and sign from the non-league have them kind of come in perform well and then move on um for for a decent fee and it's what peterborough it's how peterborough really started you know when darren mcantony went in he was signing players from the non-league i'm sure these names you know they feel old now but aaron mclean Clay, aaron mclean rather craig mccall smith george boyd you know he signed those players from non-league turned them around for a good profit and that kind of helped set up what we call now the peterborough model and now here we are 10, 15 years later, and they could be getting several million pounds from the sale on a vibe and Tony. They're the levels. You don't get there straight away, but they're the levels that we're hoping for. I'm not saying that Ben House is a player who's going to move on for a million pounds. What I'm saying is you need to see a return from these players. You need to see these players coming in, impacting the first team and moving on. It's not just about selling, is it? That's the thing. We talk about this model. Uh, of, of bringing players in and developing them, and it's definitely what you know. League One clubs who are not well funded have to do. And when you look at the clubs above us, some of the clubs, the, the money that are being spent, I think Derby County are in. I can't remember who then talks to bring Kamar Roof from Rangers. I'm all ridiculous signing for this level. Absolutely ridiculous signing. Uh, you can't compete with that. So we're going to have to compete somehow. Needs to be through the likes of Ben House scoring mm -hmm. scoring goals. So it's nice to see that. I think 
Um, I think he actually is probably in a better position than Charlie Kendall to make a quicker impact on the first team this season. Charlie Kendall, as we know, scores goals. Natural goal scorers will score goals at every every single level. I think what Charlie needs is is the experience of senior football um, at this level. So you know, if he has a slow start, I think we need to probably be, be very patient. Ben House has played now for this level for six months, albeit only on a few occasions. Uh, and, and I just think he's probably a little bit further down the line of his career progression than than Charlie Candle is both very good strikers I think or both sorry dare I say capable of being very good strikers at this level I still think we need one more um, still think you know being light on strikers is it was the problem last season and had we not been had we risked it and, and brought like or had we got Morgan Whitaker or had we brought in Liam Cullum on loan earlier I think that we would have been in a more complete position um, for instance when we played Hartlepool in the FA Cup and, and you know it's such small margins isn't it because it hardly pulled in the FA Cup. Had we won that, you get a five-figure sum, you get a half-decent draw in the next round. I seem to think it was Blackpool. You know, when you go on a cup run and then suddenly your budget increases a little bit for the year next year. And I don't think we can understate, Lincoln City certainly can't understate the importance of a cup run this coming year as well. Um, whether that's in the EFL Trophy, whether that's in the FA Cup, those two seasons back to back, we talk about the FA Cup run, we talk about the game against Arsenal, but the EFL Trophy win as well. Both of those cup runs generate such substantial funds to set us up to where we are now. You know, Danny Cowley was well back to the year that we won the League Two title. Why? Because we'd won the EFL Trophy the year before. We'd gone to Wembley, we'd earned significant money on the back of that. We can talk about boycotts, we can talk about integrity, we can talk about all that sort of stuff. Uh, that's a trophy worth progressing in and it's a trophy worth winning and with that in mind it would be nice to have a little bit more squad depth Freddie Draper we haven't seen as yet obviously Jovan Makama um, has, has had a half decent pre-season as well so maybe maybe what I'm worried about is the lack of experience up front than anything we saw that with Dan and Lundlew and Freddie you know we did have them available during these these tough times um, is Tom Hopper the right man for that he was two years ago last year he struggled who knows when you talk about the model and you talk about um, kind of sell on fees and stuff like that, it brings me to my next um, my next piece of business, let's say, uh, and something that it's it really does give me great delight to talk about Harry Toffolo moving to the Premier League because you know it's easy when a former player moves on, it's easy to say couldn't happen to a nicer bloke. It is easy to say that. But with Harry Toffolo, he's absolutely 100 percent genuine. I mean, this is a guy who is so grounded in reality. Um, and so in touch with what uh, the football fan expects that it's unreal. He could, all, he's almost like he's one of us. And I remember um, when I went to the, I can't remember the, the football blogging awards or whether it was the uh, fans, the FSA awards, but I went to one of them. I remember Toff messaging me that night. It, I'd put it on my blog, but it wasn't like I contacted the club and gone, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. He'd seen it on social media and he messaged me and wished me the best of luck completely off his own back. Um, and there was no need. You know, there's no need to do that. Other players don't do it. I don't look down on them. And do you know what I mean? Because it just it wouldn't cross my mind. Players have got so much other stuff to think about. And that really resonated with me. And I think Toff resonated with all of us. I remember when he said goodbye, the the, the Bolton game, we'd won 5-1. And, and, you know, it was one of the few times where you win 5-1 and you come away feeling down because you think we're going to lose that guy. But it's not just about personality. He's a good footballer. One of the hardest working footballers I think we've had at the club in recent times. You know, willing to drop down in order to to lift his career and go back up and on loan at Millwall didn't didn't do anything when he was when he was there or on a short term deal at Millwall one of the two um, moved to us was excellent for us was excellent for us I remember going to uh, Rotherham away with a few friends Neil Carlton was one of them don't know if Neil's watching um, and Neil got into a right argument with the guy behind us because the guy behind us was saying Toffolo do not track back he doesn't block crosses he'll never make a left back and you know here we are a couple of years later and it's a a multi-million pound move to the Premier League. Now, in terms of what it means for us, um, there is a sell-on fee. There is a, 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 a an onward interest, let's say, for the football club, which is, you know, the modern way of saying it's a sell-on fee. So we will get something. It's as simple as that. Now, at the moment, uh, it's a double transfer. So Lewis O'Brien is going to Nottingham Forest. He's a homegrown Huddersfield Town player. Uh, and Harry Toffolo is going, hopefully, to Nottingham Forest as well, where there will be a sell-on fee for us. Now, at the minute, we're talking about combined fees. Um, that could pose a sl- seemingly pose a slight issue because if the combined fee is £10 million, Huddersfield may well say, well, it's £8 million for uh, Lewis O'Brien because he's homegrown. We've put the effort into him. It's £2 million for Toffolo. Whether or not that's how it's structured, I don't know. I don't get involved in that. 
just put it this way, you and I won't find out what Lincoln City get for Harry Toffolo. We'll get the, the accounts at the end of next year or whenever it is, and we'll be able to look and see overall transfer profit, and it will include other potential sales that we make in that time, and you can roughly surmise how much we get. We won't find out. It's undisclosed. Um, and if it comes to us getting a fee or a sell-on for Harry Toffolo and then wanting to buy another player, what's the point in the club going, yeah, we got half a million for it? Because then... You know, let's say we go to Swansea City to buy Morgan Whitaker, they're going to go, well, they've just got half a million, so the fee has just gone up 200,000. That's why it's undisclosed. And as a football fan, I suppose you feel you have a right to know what a transfer fee is. But I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced that it's a necessity. You know, every, people go mad about it, don't they? Oh, undisclosed fees, grrr, a pitchfork. Um, it really doesn't bother me a huge amount, as long as I know that financially the club's on stable ground i can handle it and i'm yeah i like stats i like knowing what people have moved on for i like knowing what they've made i like knowing roughly what the tail head and fee was but it's just i like knowing it. it's not necessity anyway so how a, t- a transfer fee works i don't know if uh, to sell on fee works i don't know if you guys saw this on twitter or not but just to go through it let's say harry toffolo moved uh left us and went to huddersfield for half a million pounds okay Charlie's just kicking off. I don't know why. Um, so let's say that we, he moves for half a million pounds and then Nottingham Forest uh, pay two million pounds for him. So if we've got a 10% sell on fee, we don't get 200,000 pounds. So we don't get two million, 200,000 pounds. It's not how it works. The 10% is based on the profit. So you would take off the 500,000 pounds that we had actually paid. Um, which would go to 1.5 million, and then you would take the 10% off that, so it would be 150,000. So again, trying to work out exactly how um, how much we've got is not going to be easy because it's an undisclosed fee, so we don't know exactly how much. Uh, we don't know exactly how much we paid, uh, or we got paid for Harry Toffolo. We won't know how much he goes for. Just put it this way: if Harry Toffolo goes to Nottingham Forest for a fee. We will get something from it. Be happy with that. Be happy with that because that's the model. That's where. You know, we want to be. That's 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 what the club need to do, doesn't it? So, um, and and Richard Cross has got a great point just there. It's like showing your cards in a game of poker. Do you know what? I've written about poker today. I write about poker quite a bit for my job, and it's exactly like that. It's like playing Texas Hold'em, getting dealt two aces, and turning one of them over, and going, "Well, one of my cards is an ace," and everyone else going, "Brilliant! I can I can bet accordingly." Of course, it is. And you know, unfortunately, football's not. I say it's not the fans game. It is. I I don't mean it like that. I mean, it's a business as well. It's not the game that we think it is. It's not the game that championship manager or football manager as it is now or FIFA lead us to think it is. It's a very different game to that. It is a business. And as much as you and I, I'm sure, hate that, hate to think that this this sport that we're also heavily invested in, that we're emotionally invested in, that we, you know, we have our heroes in, that we is, is so emotional is a business, but it is a business. It is a business, and we're a decent business, Lincoln City. We're a business punching probably a little bit above our weight, um, and and you know you have to be as coy as you can. It's why now when the when the internet uh, when the news breaks on the internet that we've signed a player, it goes it's a multi-year contract. You know, it's not hard for another team to find out how long that contract is, but they don't want you know every the 72 and football league world and all that sort of stuff knowing exactly when to start ramping it all up on me on social media, do they? So. So that's Harry Toffolo on the move, um, which I think is uh, is is big news. Um, I've also got a list here of three former Lincoln, uh, four former Lincoln City players who are on the news as well, uh, on the move as well. I'm just going to talk about how I think they're going to do with their new clubs um, and, uh, and and kind of you know what they did for Lincoln as well. So sorry, I'm just lifting my festering trotters out the pool to get a fly off them. Um, so first of all, Josh Griffiths has signed for Portsmouth on loan a year after it was reported that he chose to come to us rather than Portsmouth. Um, I'm very, very surprised, I think, at that. And I think West Brom have backed themselves into a little bit of a corner with their goal in their goalkeeper situation because it feels like a sideways step for a player to have a season at like League One level when he plays for a club and then to have another season at League One level as well. Um but there wasn't really anywhere else they could go unless they sold Alex Palmer, and I don't think they wanted to do that. So they sold Sam Johnson, but they still wanted to loan a player out. Now, it is weird, isn't it? Because you know they, they didn't want Josh Griffiths to play in the FA Cup last year because Sam Johnson might have left in January, so they might have recalled Griffiths. 
uh, but they're willing to let him go out on loan this year with with more or less the, the similar goalkeeper options. Um, Josh Griffiths is a good goalkeeper, but let, let, let's be honest. There was times last season where I thought he was a better keeper than Alex Palmer. I think probably over the course of the season, I'd probably take Palmer over Griffiths. But Griffiths is a lot younger. Let's not forget that as well. He's only a young lad, uh, 21. I think he'll do very well at Portsmouth. Um, I think he is a, a player who probably feels he has a bit to prove this season, staying in this division. He probably feels going to Portsmouth, he's taking a step up in terms of the level of the club he's at, but he's only going to be playing the same teams. And that's not a slight, slight, uh, slight on him. That's not me having a pop at Josh Griffiths. It's just me kind of saying that's the situation. You know, it's it's a year of non-progression. And look, if we were to loan Sam Long out again, and, and it won't happen because obviously the, the, their season will be will be over. But if we were to now loan Sam Long out and he went to Shamrock, would it be a progression? It'd be a slightly better club than he would in the League of Ireland, but would it be a progression in terms of the level? Probably not. And Josh Griffiths would might feel that his England under-21 career might be taking a bit of a hit from staying in League One, but we shall see. But Gavin Bazuna did really well at Portsmouth last year, um, and he got a, a move, I think, to Southampton on the back of that. So, yeah, it's decent. I don't think Griffiths will get um, dare I say, not a hero's welcome. I don't think he'll get get stick when he comes back to Lincoln. But I just, yeah, I, he was part of a team that underachieved, and I, I, I will look more fondly on Alex Palmer than Will Griffiths. But Josh is a very good goalkeeper and a nice guy. One player that is progressing from last season is Luis Fiorini. Um, we say in the least surprising move of the summer, Luis Fiorini joins Blackpool. Uh, but you know, Morgan Rogers joining Blackpool would be uh, the least surprising of the summer and um, I, Michael Appleton like any manager signs players that he's been around or he knows or he's worked with Mark Kennedy was the same as telling us about Tashan Oakley Booth you know because he said I, I saw him playing for Spurs I marked him down as one that I wanted and, and when I came to Lincoln he was on Lincoln's list as well so that happens Lewis Farine is a very good footballer very good footballer indeed I thought he had a really good spell at the end of September, beginning of October, I thought he looked um, he looked very good. He was forced at times to play a little bit out of position, perhaps. I think that Fiorini played better when we were in what... I mean, we played 4-3-3 most weeks, but when we played like a 4-1-2, so with the holding midfielder and two in advance, I thought Fiorini alongside him, a Grandel's figure, played better a little bit. You know, kind of the shackles were off, slightly less um, subdued, I think, when he plays in the six. Uh, or in the four role rather than you know, he plays in the eight role. He had a little bit more freedom. There's no doubt whatsoever that once he got back to form kind of end of February onwards, he was one of our best players. And, you know, had he not had the drop in form and kind of sat out a few games and that sort of thing, he would have been, he would, in my mind, have been a contender for player of the season. Uh, he certainly had elements of the Joe Morrell about him and the John Finnegan about him in terms of the type of player he was, but he's a young man. He's got a big, big future. Uh, I think he'll do well for Blackpool. I think that the championship will suit him better uh, than League One did, perhaps. Um, dare I say better pitches away from home. Dare I say uh, maybe a little bit a little bit more time on the ball in, against certain teams. Uh, they get very, very few long ball, direct, aggressive teams in the championship. And I think they benefit probably from that as well. So, Best of luck to him. Do you know what? I would have had Luis Fiorini back here in a heartbeat. I think that he's a great midfielder. I think he would have made um, a, a, a superb player for us again. But you don't want to see lone players doing that whole stagnating in League One thing. You know, there's no way Manchester City would have gone, yeah, let's loan him back out to League One. It's why Brooke Norton Coffee, more likely than anything, won't move to a League One side because it's kind of been there, done that, completed it, mate. What am I going to do now? And it's, it's why West Brom don't paint themselves into a corner, but it's why the West Brom move. OK, they're not a Premier League team, but it's a little surprising you know, that they didn't keep Josh Griffiths there. They needed him to play. They'd worked their way into a, a situation. And I think the way that the loan market works, I think it would have been tough for them to loan him out to another um, another uh, uh, club in uh, abroad in Europe. Because the, the loan has changed, hasn't it, slightly? It doesn't apply to certain ages and certain sort of homegrown players. So. Um, yeah, interesting. Uh, so John Marcus has also moved in our division. This is uh, I'm a little bit late to the party with this one. To be fair, he's moved to Bristol Rovers. He had a little bit of a dig in uh, on News Now. Uh, I read a couple of articles where he had said that he wanted to play for a manager who played to his strengths and appreciated him. Um, 
whether that was just purely a dig at Danny Cowley or whether that was a dig at Lincoln City as well. I don't know. He didn't specify. He always seemed to have the right attitude at Lincoln. John Marquis can score goals. I think when you were on the outside looking in, you looked at John Marquis and thought he can not only score goals, but he's a predator, a poacher. He'll get on the end of anything. He'll get you 25 a season. And actually, I think he's not. I think he misses as many as he scores. Uh, he didn't score an awful lot of crucial goals. I, I seem to remember a couple in defeats. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, I can't specifically remember which defeat. Burton, I think we lost 2-1. I think Marquis scored. Um, he did score, obviously, against Sheffield Wednesday, but he just disappeared towards the end of the season. don't think he was ever the right partner for Tom Hopper. It always, I always wondered a little bit about that because... Um, I thought they were right. They were similar sorts of players. I thought if you're going to play John Marquis, play Marquis with Cullen or play Marquis with not the two players. They played completely kind of independently of each other. And against Sheffield Wednesday, it was hard because Wednesday had the same threat twice, if you know what I mean, and they couldn't deal with it. But it wasn't hard for other teams to deal with. I remember um, it was Shrewsbury, wasn't it? Shrewsbury away. I can't remember if those two started or if they came on, but it was, it was just, it was poor. Marquis, for me, was not the right type of player for Lincoln City. Um, I thought at one point he was. I thought at one point we had to sign him up. He was going to be vital. Uh, but I think that you need to do too much work to get John Marquis involved. And I think when you are a team like us and you're going to play the high press and a lot of hard work, I think that he probably comes across as a little bit of a passenger at times. Having said that, I think Bristol Rovers will play to his strengths. I think they'll play a 3-5-2. They'll get a lot of crosses into the box. They've got Harry Anderson there, a couple of other good players. I think Bristol Rovers, they're my dark horses for this season. Um, as much as I dislike Joey Barton, he's been there and done it at the top end of League One. He's making some eye-catching signings as well. I think John Marquis probably will score 15 or 20 goals for them. You know, one man's trash is another man's treasure. You can settle in one place and not settle in others. I think John Marquis joins that list of strikers that... Um, have joined Lincoln City, not particularly scored many goals um, and then done well before and after. You know, the likes of Joe Allen, the likes of Leo Fortune West, the likes of Kevin Gore, who have come with good records and, and we've been a striker's graveyard. The last one, and yes, I have uh, Richard Cross, as have you seen the pain signing today? Nick Oxbury says pain to Charlton today, which I know because he messaged me calling him my mate, um, even though I never met Jack Payne. Thanks, Nick, for that anyway. So Jack Payne signed for Charlton today. And a lot of people were kind of telling me that that was um, a surprising move. And for me, absolutely was not a surprising move. Jack Payne is a, a great footballer. Um, what surprised me was that he stayed in League Two. He's way, way better than League Two. Um, one of the few players from that kind of early Danny Cowley era um, that was that was moved on that I really thought had more of a career at Lincoln and could have gone on and done more under Michael Appleton. Um, he was a 10 that liked to play facing the attack. Um, I mean, he, he worked hard. He could create goals. He didn't quite score as many for Lincoln as we'd like, but he was always willing to. I think he scored the first goal of the Michael Appleton era as well. And uh, do you know what? I was actually quite upset when Jack Payne left because I thought that he was going to be a key player for us. Had Danny Cowley not left, I think Jack Payne might still be at Lincoln City now. And I think, you know, he was playing behind, somebody's mentioned Tyler Walker, but he was playing behind Tyler Walker and he had George Grant around him. We had some you know, some nice players at that point. So Jack Payne moving to Charlton doesn't surprise me. Again, do you know what? I think that he's going to be a really, really good signing for Charlton. I think he's a good League One player. He's done it at this level before. He was on loan at Blackburn, I think, and did well for them. Um, he can be hit and miss, but I just have this feeling that he'll do well. He did well under Bangana at Swindon, and that's obviously Bangana's gone to to Charlton now. Um, yeah, and he's he's actually of the ones I've just read out: Griffiths, Fiorini, Marquis, and Payne. Payne is the one that realistically we could have signed in terms of financials. I'm not saying we were ever interested in. But Payne's one that we could have signed. Actually, I think could have fitted in with what we do. If we're playing the four-three-three, and you were having a hard-working midfield that you could almost get away with him playing in that advanced central midfield role. The one argument with Payne is perhaps at times lightweight. I think he can easily be bullied off the ball. I think when he plays a Wickham, for instance, he might not quite have the same uh, impact as when he's playing a Forest Green or against a Lincoln, even. If you let him have the ball in the final third at his feet, facing goal is a danger. So, um, yeah, I think I, I rated I rated Jack Payne. So where does that leave us? Well, um, in my mind, you know, I mean, all these players moving on, it's by the by, isn't it? It's 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 
content filler almost. It doesn't affect Lincoln City in any way, but apart from obviously Harry Toffolo. Uh, and Steve Barton, I think, sorry, I'm just skimming through. He said, if Harry goes to, do we have a monetary interest? The answer is yes, we do. You'll have to watch back, mate, at the end to find out about that. I've covered that at the beginning. Um, but yeah, so where does it leave us? I still think that we're a couple of players light. Um, it's nice to know that there hasn't been any outgoings, but you know, we're less than two weeks to the beginning of the season now. And uh, I just find it a little bit, um, a little bit concerning um, that, not concerning maybe, but I, I feel that there are one or two key areas where we still need a first team player that we've not filled. And I'm concerned that we're not going to get that player now. Um, the holding midfield role, the Liam Bridcut role, the kind of the dirty work that McGrandles was doing last season to a certain level concerned about it if I'm honest um, maybe I'm wrong maybe Tash and Oakley Booth will do it maybe Lass Sorensen will step up maybe maybe it's just me being a worry wart um, but I felt that that was one hugely important role now bear in mind I thought that that was one hugely important role in the Michael Appleton era so maybe the way Mark Kennedy plays it might not be quite as serious but I think when you look at the friendlies we had against Sheffield United the second half the second game that we played we looked very very light in midfield very light I think if we're going to sign any more players, certainly loan player, I would expect us to sign at least one more central midfielder, almost certainly. Um, Positive-wise, I mean, it's certainly the goalkeeper situation. I think further up, somebody had said that they were surprised to see... Um, there we go, Richard said he was surprised to see Jordan Wright playing against Leeford. I'm probably not quite so surprised as that. I think Sam Long's had some first-team exposure through the course of the uh, pre-season. You know, Carl Rushworth, he's definitely going to be our first team goalkeeper. I don't think there's any any doubt whatsoever about that. So um, it wouldn't surprise me to see Jordan Wright head out on loan. Um, Carl Rushworth, actually, just to touch on that, bear in mind the last couple of years we've signed the goalkeeper uh, and they've not had an opportunity really to play in with the team before we've gone into the season. And I think, I think it hurt us with Josh Griffiths because he made a few errors. It was an unsettled defence as well, but I think about Gillingham on the opening game, which day we should have won that. And I think he fumbled the ball, if you remember. Um, Wickham, where we lost 1-0. I think actually, again, there was an, an error in communication between him and um, uh, between him and Max Melbourne at the time. So, yeah, I think I think we paid for that last year. Getting Carl Rush within early is good. Um, and, and you, you know, there are key areas on the football team that I think if you can get them settled and they're of a certain level, I think that it gives you a big advantage. Goalkeeper, your two central defenders and your holding midfielder are, are probably the main areas. You know, you get those right and you get those functioning together and, and you know, at League One, you would expect them to be League One level. You know, even teams like Port Vale will be signing League One level players and it's about getting that settled team and, and playing to their strengths. You can be quite solid and that's one benefit that I feel is that we're looking at pretty settled central area there. I think Rushworth in goal, Powdy O'Connor, uh, and it looks to me like potentially Regan Paul, they're going to be kind of the the central heartbeat of the defence. If they're settled and they play the first 10, 15 games together, keeping Regan Paul, by the way, would be big for the club. Um, you know, I don't see any reason why we can't be much, much more solid. And, and as Richard just says, it's the spine of the team. It is, yeah. And you, you almost then take that through to an, a central, a more hardworking central midfielder ahead, like a, a John Finnegan or a, a type player, and then use your central striker as well. But Certainly that nucleus, that base, those foundations, you get those right and and you're not going to be far off because, you know, opponents don't score goals from the wings. They score them from inside the area. They don't score from their own half. They score from, you know, 25 yards out. So if you're the players that you have in between the sticks and protecting the area, to sort of 18, 25 yards from goal, uh, are competent, settled, know where each other are going to be. It gives you a huge advantage. And last season, honestly, the only difference between us finishing 17th and 10th last season in a poor, overrated League One uh, was a lack of consistency in those key areas. We played far too many different combinations of central defender. It left the goalkeeper exposed at times. He didn't have enough of the um, of the preseason to, to, to settle quickly. And we didn't have a holding midfielder because Liam Bridcup played 10, 15 games all season and the players that replaced him weren't good enough to do the job that they needed to do. And that's not saying Conor McGrandles wasn't a good player, saying that he wasn't four, he wasn't the holding midfielder, he doesn't dictate play, he wasn't the orchestra, the quarterback, as they you know, often get told, which I absolutely despise, but it, it's fair enough. Um, they weren't the conductor. We still need a conductor. And, you know, 
if we get that uh, at the weekend, you know, chatting to some of the guys at the weekend who were here, they feel, you know, get the conductor, we could go into the season tomorrow and hold our own um, if we don't lose anybody. And, and Dale Warner says, where do you see us losing players now? The squad needs some outs. Loan play, loans almost certainly. I can see us loaning out, you know, three or four players. I think some of the young academy graduates are going to need senior football before they impact the first team. So I can see that happening. And even if you say the likes of Worsfold Greg, for instance, are... You know, they could easily be first team players in six months' time. They still need that senior experience. The the kind of the balancing act there is the EFL trophy is early doors and that's where they might get senior experience. So the club are gonna have to manage that very, very carefully. You know, it's a careful balancing line between loaning them out too early, not giving them league uh, Lincoln City experience when they could get it. Or loan, you know, not loaning them out. We get knocked out after three games, and then they're sitting around the training ground thinking, "Well, I could be out playing at, you know, at, I don't know, random conference team, Scunthorpe or wherever. You know, they could be out there on loan." So, I think that's the balancing act. I think one of the keepers goes out on loan. If you're talking about um, as losing players from the first team squad, a bid for Regan Paul from Blackpool would be probably about as surprising as Lewis Fiorini moving there, in my opinion. And it, it, that really wouldn't surprise me, given that Chris Maguire didn't feature again at the weekend. I'm almost certain that at some point he's going to go. And it wouldn't surprise me if sometime before the transfer window, he hasn't been able to get a club uh, and there's a, a, a mutual agreement there to allow him to to leave with a portion of his wages and find another club. Because I don't think he's in the, the club's plans either. Uh, other than that, I think we've still got Joe Walsh injured. He's going to be hard to get rid of. So I can't see Joe Walsh going anywhere. But you never know, do you, Anthony Scully? Maybe. Maybe there's a move there. I mean, he had a great season last season. One thing you know with Scully is he gets goals. Yeah, he pops up in the right places at the right time. And who knows, maybe the slight tweaks that Mark Kennedy made to the formation suit Scully more than Michael Appleton because at times it was hard to define where Anthony Scully was playing. But he was hard to define where he was playing and he still hit 15 goals a season. Imagine if you found his right position. And he looked comfortable there and was, was always an impact. Big, big player. Could be a huge player still. And, you know, it's interesting that people some people always seem to think that the key to a new season is new signings. Always think that, don't you? Always think we need players to come in. We need players to come in. And actually, you know, I fall into that trap as well. But you look at some of the players that are on our books that I think could be huge for the club. And that's TJ Ioma, for instance. You know, last season, not great. Um, not terrible, but not great. But you think about him the season before, if we get that player back, it'd be a little bit like a new signing, would it not? Because we'd have, you know, a player who's combative, who's um, understands the level, who can play two positions, who can get down the line. It's an interesting one. Anthony Scully, I mean, again, people talk about you know, needing attackers. I do it. I do it as well. We've got a guy there who scored 30 goals in two seasons or whatever. And again, do we need a new player or do we actually just need him to have a decent preseason and stay fit? Because that was his problem. He never, he was never really all that fit. He picked up an injury after he, you know, tore Cambridge United apart and played through his injury, and then was set out for a while, and took a while to come back in. And you know, but Anthony Scully for the first two or three months last season was absolutely superb. Last Sorensen, and you can kind of, you know, anyone who says to me that a Lincoln City player is not good enough, um, in ninety nine at times out of a hundred, I'll say you're wrong because they are good enough. A player who's played briefly, albeit briefly, in the Premier League, who's represented his country at under-16 level or whatever, is good enough. He is. Las Sorensen's good enough. Um, it's, can you hear the cockerel going? That's uh, Lenny Cockrell. Um, but yeah, so he's good enough. It's just whether we can get him doing it in the right positions at Lincoln. Actually, we might have the nucleus of a half-decent squad and the players that we're dropping in here, there and everywhere are just, you know, are, are kind of the garnish. But I still think we need um, a holding midfielder and I still think we need an attacking option like a Morgan Whitaker. and if that comes on loan from the Premier League which it almost certainly must it wouldn't surprise me yeah, we've got two loan players I think in at the minute obviously Tashan um, and, uh, and and Carl Rushworth we're not going to we'll go into the league season with two more surely and I've just started noticing actually that some loan players have started moving so sometimes what these big clubs do they'll keep their players around their squad for their pre-season and then look to loan them out as the season closes on to get them the, you know get them settled at their new club but also so that they know that they're part of of the club uh, their parent club going forward so um 
There we go. Uh, Richard Cross says, what's the news on Maguire? I have the car started and ready to start. Um, I don't have a clue, mate. I wish I did. Uh, I wish I did. Uh, Andy Blackburn, good day, afternoon. Good afternoon, mate. And Richard Sharon says, why is the cockerel called Glenn? Well, actually, he's a bantam. I think, um, and I named him after uh, my good friend Len, who was the city gent at Bradford, um, kind of after. I, I got burned a little bit because we I had two chickens and I named them Reedy and Akindi, and Akindi's still alive, so I basically got a chicken named after a, um, a striker that you know was, was eager to score against us for Gillingham, so that really annoyed me. So I, I steered away. Obviously, Glenn Cockrell wouldn't come back and hurt us, but yeah, there we go. Um, right, so there we go. 35 minutes done. I think uh, it's probably time for me to pull my feet out of this paddling pool and uh, sort some dinner out. So thank you for watching. Uh, sorry if I haven't picked up all of your questions and obviously the, the content's been a bit a bit short of late, but there hasn't really been all that much going on. Um, we've got some good stuff planned for the year, though. Uh, I've just agreed to deal with somebody to write some um, kind of League One roundups for us every week, so that'll keep you informed on bits and bobs. Uh, we've got Tom coming back with the previews. Uh, there's going to be plenty of video content from Jake. So I've got quite a few bits and bobs going on for the site. Um, and obviously, hopefully over the next week and a half, we'll have a talk of some signings. There'll be no details from Blackburn. I'm afraid I'm away in Leeds on Saturday. Um, but no doubt I'll have somebody there and, and try and do something a couple of days afterwards. But other than that, I'll bring you any news as it happens. So thank you very much for watching. And uh, I'll catch up with you again all soon. Goodbye. I say goodbye, I press the wrong button. Goodbye now.